Okay, guys, this is it. We're about to find the dragon up here on the rooftop and try to finish it off. There it is. There's the dragon. Saw that. Oh man, look at his breath. Purple fire. Oh man. Hello there, big boy. Alright, here we go. This is a pretty this can be a pretty tough fight. So the question is. Which army do I use here? Well, let's get, let's use the mages. There's only 12 of them. And they're pretty, they can use some pretty strong spells. Let's also get Tarantulas out here. Let's give that to Rook Aura. Let's all let's give that to me. Heroic defense. Let's give that to Alistair. Hmm. I could have probably given one of those to Liliana. Oh well. Liliana. Let me check her arrows. She's down to six fire arrows. Hmm. Use those arrows. Oh. Does that. Oh boy, Leliana is the one that made it, made it the most difficult to keep alive. I got, don't have some of her other more better skills here. a tricky part now of this fight because now another dark one will come out and the archie one will stay over there out of reach so what so here's what you gotta do you gotta use these ballistas right. to hit of him <laughs> Gotta keep doing this over and over. Unfortunately, these dark spawn are gonna come over here and make it a little bit difficult for you to keep constantly doing that. Stuck. See, he'll keep doing that, and you can just keep doing this over and over. 
until he comes back to the main area. Uh, great Leliana is dead. Takes very different ranges of damage each time. I just keep doing this over and over. Hopefully my teammates keep keeping the dark spawn busy while I do this. So I can focus on the arch demon. And that should be enough to get him to come back to the main area. Yep, now he's back over there. Okay, so that phase of the fight is over. The mages are trying their hardest. They're fighting. There. Factoring this will really help out. Another potion. Oh, not a potion. There we go. Ah. Okay. Switch up with the heroics here. Oh, I need an army. I'm done with the mage, so let's get the dwarves out here. I wasn't even paying attention to that. Whoops. Look how much health he's got. We've almost got him. Focus on the archdemon, please. Oh, yes! Look at this! Killing blow! I'm on his head! Very nice. <laughs> Woo! That was awesome. Uh, I keep fighting until until it triggers. Until the fine until the tr uh, cutscene triggers here. Look at Tarantulas, he's off to fight. He's like, I'm gonna keep fighting. Come on, trigger. I think it, I, all right, here we go. The big cutscene after I defeat the Archdemon. Here we go. It's time to finish it off. Yeah. Finish it.
Yeah, look at them. They're running. They're running. They know. They know the dragon is dead. did it. We killed the archdemon and ended the blight. We did it. Very nice. Auto save. Very good. And now for and a terrific ending. It was over. With the archdemon dead, one of my favorite endings Dark's in a video game Hall ever. Quickly crumbled. Most fled back into the deep roads. They would remain a threat for years to come. But the blight had been ended before it had truly begun. Ferelden had been saved, and the entire kingdom rose up to joyously greet its new king. Look at this, this is awesome. Three wardens stood beneath, and a new age They love him! But at what cost? The people love their new king. And yes, Duncan there asks, but at what cost? Fortunately, not as much of a cost as we thought it may be. This whole ending here is absolutely fantastic. I love it. My friends, we is are gathered Gorm? to celebrate <laughs> those responsible for our victory. Of those who stood against the Darkspawn siege of Denner, oh, everyone changed their tire. In particular, <laughs> who deserves Commendation. Huh. The one who oh, led the shucks. final charge against the Archdemon remains with us still. An inspiration to all he saved that day. Ladies oh. and gentlemen, may I present to you the hero of Ferelden. The first Grey Warden to defeat the Blight since Gadahel four centuries ago. Huh. Stan is not impressed. My friend, He's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It is hard to imagine how you could have aided Ferelden more. I hmm. think it only appropriate that I return the favor. Is there oh, any boon Alistair. that you might request of Ferelden's king? If it is within my power, I will grant it. And so you get several choices here. You can, and uh, most of them are going to be the same no matter what class or race or story you chose. Like, I only wish to continue to serve the crown, your, the crown, your majesty, a title and the riches to go with it. Uh, the sacrifice of the warden should not be forgotten again. I have no need to know. Those are all the same. But there's usually always one particular choice that you can get that were specific to your origin story. So, I'm going to say, I only ask that my people be aided against the Darkspawn. Absolutely. The dwarves face the Darkspawn every day, don't they? Yes, they do. hereby offers its full military support to the new king of Orzammar. Good. And will aid in reclaiming the deep roads. Let it also be known that the Arling of Amaranthine, once the land of Arl Howe, is now granted to the Grey Wardens. Nice. There they can rebuild, following the example of those who went before them. What are your plans? Will you remain with the Grey Wardens? Hmm. I can either say I think you'll need my help. The Darkspawn are still a threat. The Grey Wardens need me. I think I'll travel at least for a time. I think I'll return to Orzammar. I intend to find Morrigan. But I'm going to say I think I'll return to Orzammar. That is my home. And especially since I've now been restored, have my rights restored. Of course. I hope you know that you are always welcome in court, should you decide to return. Thank you, my friend. Uh, there's a group of Ferelden citizens waiting outside to get a look at their hero. <laughs> I suggest you make at least a brief appearance before they storm the gate. <laughs> Just tell the guard at the door when you're ready. <laughs> you got it. All right. I'm going to go ahead and make a manual save here.
All right. And now let's make our rounds talking to everybody one last time. So, my so, friend, what's it like being the king now? It. I'm impressed, aren't you? The odds are completely <laughs> against one of us actually getting to the Archdemon. But of course you would make it. I knew you would. I just don't hmm. understand how you're still alive. I guess Riordan was wrong? To be honest, Morrigan saved I me. I had no idea. I suppose that makes sense. Speaking of Morrigan, do you know where she went? I'm told she vanished right after the battle. Yeah, no that sounds like her. Yeah. She doesn't want to be followed. Very dramatic. I don't imagine she'd be easy to find if she didn't want to be. Uh, at any rate, yep. I can see Arleman giving me that look. More <laughs> king stuff, I suppose. I can never <laughs> wait. And if yep. I don't get the chance some other time, thanks. For everything. No problem, my friend. This is hardly goodbye. You're leaving, aren't you? And I'm not. I guess we'll see how things play out. But this certainly feels like an ending. At least hmm. for now. I'll let you get to for your now. adoring public. They want Tuh. to see the hero of Ferelden, and who am I to keep them waiting? I shall see you later, Your Majesty. He will be a great king. I'm sure of it. Hey, speaking of Arleman. It is over. I can barely believe it. You stopped the civil war and then defeated the blight. On behalf of Ferelden, allow me to say thank you. It truly You're can welcome. be said enough. Hmm. You are it's welcome. It's too bad that you aren't remaining here in the capital. The hero of Ferelden would have influence, but I understand. Myself, I, I will be remaining here to help Alistair. Things Tegan I need to will see, take, over take the care of. Redcliffe, at least for the time being. Connor seems well enough, and Isolde Good. refuses to speak of what happened. She huh. says she never wants to go back. I cannot thank you enough for saving them. They are the joy of my existence. Tell of me, course. have you noticed anything strange about the lad? He seems quiet. Hmm. Consider what he's been ah, through. You are no doubt correct. It is my imagination, I am sure. But here I am rambling on. I shall let you get back to your celebration, Warden. Enjoy it while you can. Hmm. Gorum. Hello, my friend. Ah, glorious. You've really huh. showed these humans something. Took down the Blight practically single-handed. Oh, I hardly did it single-handed by myself. <laughs> It's good, to, good for, of you to come. I'm not Gorham. just here to witness the whole human spectacle, however. The assembly oh. contacted me with a message for you. I guess they really? figured what is once it? a manservant, always a manservant. Ah, I don't mind. Thing is, we've both been given leave to return to Orzammar. Huh? Both of us? Apparently, I went down with you. Seems I rise back up with you too. Seems nice. your brother is mighty grateful for what you did. We've been huh. restored to House Idukin. Full rights in everything. Yep, Not that's only what he that, said. But the assembly is considering naming you a paragon. Wow. A paragon. In our time. A paragon. So I'm an Iduken again. As am I. And if you become a paragon, that will make you the only one alive by my count. Not a bad nice. change from an exiled murderer, no? <laughs> Congratulations, my friend. I heard Thank you weren't you, planning on staying. Think you might head back home? Lots yeah. of opportunities for you now. Yep, you know, I did say I wanted to go back. You know, I do have a son there. I'd like to like to see him. So, hmm, that's the plan. Good. And I would be proud to take up my old position if you'll have me. Hmm. At any of rate, I'll I let will. the humans get back to their dwarf worship. <laughs> <laughs> Still makes me smile to hear them talk. <laughs> Thank you, my friend. Liliana. So here we are. The conquering hero has won the day, and now he takes his bow and exits the stage. A fine ending. Hmm. But does the hero get his girl? <laughs> yes. Yes, he most certainly does. You know? Good. I can't help now but think of my vision. Whether it was the maker sending me to you or whatever, it was a good thing. I thought I was hmm. supposed to save you, to show you the way. 
But it seems it was meant to be the other way around. Odd how that works, no? Yeah, I guess so. I suppose it is. I think you did plenty. Flatterer. So, if <laughs> I heard right... Yes, I am. You'll be leaving soon. Any room for an extra body on your travels? Of course. That was the plan. Good. I imagine that whatever you get up to will be anything but boring. At any <laughs> rate, I should let you get back to your celebration before someone drags you away. I look forward <laughs> to seeing you again afterwards. So, I look forward to that as well. Let's see. Who's that dwarf? Oh, there's Zevran, and there's Wynn. Let's talk to Zevran first. I will be relieved when all this pomp and ceremony is done. <laughs> Such events are perfect opportunities for assassins, after all. I can't help huh. but expect the crows to appear at any moment. Which would be a welcome break, mind you. <laughs> Do you think the crows will still come after Eventually. you? Eventually. With Talisin dead, it may take them time to figure out what has happened. But they are like the tides. Predictable. You know, it hmm. does occur to me that staying in one place is only going to invite the crows to find me that much quicker. While fun, that might eventually get complicated. You said earlier hmm. that you are planning on leaving soon. Is that true? Hmm. That is indeed what I said. Why? Do you want to you come along? You tend to get up to interesting things. You meet interesting people and then you kill them. I'm game to tag along if you are. Nice. I'd be happy for the and company. And I promise not to get you into too much trouble. Uh, well, <laughs> no more than you get me into, anyhow. <laughs> well then, since we're going to be leaving together, uh, we can speak after you have been sufficiently paraded in front of the populace. Don't worry, <laughs> I'll keep an eye on you and make sure no one gets a clear shot. Not without paying me a great deal of coin, anyhow. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. Hello, Wynn. The hero of Ferelden. My, my. How does it feel? Hmm. Uh, well, they could have come, thought of a better name. Alistair's <laughs> idea, I understand. <laughs> uh, of course. <laughs> Which should explain much. But it's yep. not so bad, is it? A blight defeated with the other nations barely becoming aware. Who could ask for better? <laughs> I didn't do it on my own. I don't think many heroes ever do. I'm glad not to be on the receiving end of all this attention myself. I say, hmm. let the young have their fame. Not that I've gone without notice. Irving asked me to take over as first enchanter. But I don't huh. wish to go back. Not after all this. Instead, I've decided to travel. Shale has expressed a desire to go to Devinter to look into a way to regain her mortality. And huh. I will join her. Yeah. Wow. Huh. I was hoping that you, though, that you might stay with I me. I appreciate the offer. But I cannot. What Aww. time I have remaining, I wish to spend being useful. If we do Aww, not see each other Wynn. again, live well, Warden. And thank you. No, Wynn, thank you. No, seriously, thank you. There's no way I could have gotten through some of those fights without you. <laughs> Isn't Shale here? Did I miss Shale? No. Hmm. Strange. I, th I thought that sometimes Shale can actually be seen around here. I guess not. Not this time, anyway. Oh, looks like Mikey's over there with Sten. Let's talk to Ogren first. Hey, Felsi! Humans have a better taste for spirits than I thought. <laughs> huh. The ale up here is actually good. Or oh, some good. I'm glad to see like you're getting acquainted. Comparison. <laughs> Probably because they put dirt in it. Go figure. Yeah, go figure. <laughs> Do you think you might head back to Orzammar? Mm, I don't know. Maybe eventually. I'm getting used to that big sky up there. And I'm huh. thinking I might just look up Felsi again. See where that goes. Uh, she's right next to you. <laughs> I'm glad. I hope you two are happy. <laughs> I'll drink to that. Oh, uh, yep. well. Enough babbling. That pot-bellied son of a whore Tegan said I'd pass out before drinking an entire <laughs> barrel of pickle juice. I aim to prove him wrong. Oh, Tegan, you never challenge Ogren to those kind of challenges. <laughs> Take care of yourself, Ogren. Been good Ogren. traveling with you, Warden. Don't get lost in the shuffle now. I hear ya. 
You too, my friend. Oh, Mikey. It hey, is Stan. good to see you again, Kadan. These people, they call you hero. It is a strange word, but I think I understand its meaning. The Arishak on occasion has declared a Kunari to be Kunoran Vel, one who serves as an example to others. Such examples hmm. are always made after their death, however, a death in service hmm. to the Kun. A living Kunoran Vale would be too proud. Hmm. Do the Kunari celebrate and put on parades? When a Kunoran Vale is declared, certainly. It is one of few occasions when the Kunari are permitted to engage in revelry. There is imbibing of spirits, public chanting, meditations abandoned. It huh. is madness. <laughs> Hmm. This is a madness. Everyone is just relieved. Hmm. Yes. Were I too weak to protect myself, I suppose oh, I would Stan. also be vastly relieved to have a hero save the day. I suppose <laughs> I should tell you. I have decided to return to my people. Your quest oh. is done, and thus so is my reason for accompanying you. Hmm. Hmm. That will be a long trip yes. home. Yes. It will be difficult to travel alone, after so much time spent with companions. It must be said, you found my sword and gave me a chance to restore my honor. I owe you a great debt. Oh, Sten. You helped me as well. It's been good. It has. That one of the Baz, a foreigner, would become known as Kadan to me. Unthinkable. Yet here it is. Perhaps hmm. I shall see you again one day. Until then, may you always find the path you seek. Farewell, Kadan. Farewell, Sten. All right. Are you ready, my lord? The crowds outside are getting restless. <laughs> restless? What am I supposed just to do? Just put in an appearance, so I understand it. The people huh. just want to see their hero in person. I'm supposed to take you to your right. escort. Full brigade. Their armor all shined up and everything. They're really honored <laughs> to be guarding you, and let me tell you. Right. Let's go then. I'll take you there now. Follow me. All right, now is the epilogue. In the months that followed, and this is this is great about this epilogue, is that now you're going to see the results of all of, well, not all, but many of the choices that you made throughout this game. In the months that followed his coronation, Alistair surprised many by studying the art of governance and doing his best to rule the kingdom with a fair and even hand. He proved quite popular with the people, his humor and easy grace winning them over as much as his willingness to sneak out of the castle and mingle in the lower class taverns on occasion. <laughs> News that the urn of sacred ashes had been found in Ferelden did not spread outside the Chantry until Brother Genitivi made an announcement several months after the defeat of the Darkspawn. The manuscript detailing his research and his experience with Andraste's cult drew huge interest among scholars throughout Thetis. Some years later, the Chantry announced that the resting place of Andraste's ashes had indeed been found. A ripple of excitement spread among the pious people of Thetis, with many undertaking pilgrimages to see the ashes or partake of their healing powers. Following months of effort, the Tower of the Circle of Magi was finally cleansed of the last spirits to slip through the veil. No further abominations were created, and First Enchanter Irving was pleased to declare the Circle safe. All that could be saved had been. With the slavers shut down in the alienage, the lot of the city-born elves improved for a time. The new king even named the local elder to his personal court, a scandal amongst the humans, but a sign of new hope to the elves. Shiani continued to be an outspoken member of the alienage community, and in time became the new elder. That outspokenness earned her frequent trouble, but served her people well. Arl Eamon remained in Denrim for some time, acting as the chancellor and chief advisor to King Alistair. Tegan ruled over Redcliffe in his stead and was surprised to find himself well loved by the villagers, who were still grateful for the nights he spent defending their lives. In time, Eamon abdicated in favor of his brother, an event the locals greeted with approval and enthusiasm. The young woman Caitlin eventually made it to Denerim safely, and used the small fortune that she had received for her father's sword to open a foundry while the city rebuilt. The Foundry did well, turning her into a wealthy and respected woman. By chance, she met Tegan again at court, 
and within months, the two of them married. Aww. And that was the reason why I gave all those sovereigns to Caitlyn. Because I just like that, that she and Tegan eventually end up together. I think that's real sweet. Bella, the tavern wench, made it to De Denerim safely. With the money she was given, she opened a brewery of her own. Huh. The Dalish elves prospered after the siege at Denerim, having earned much respect for their part in the battle. For once, human lands welcomed the wandering folk. The new keeper, Lanaya, was respected both amongst the Dalish as well as in the Ferelden court. She was a voice of reason, and other Dalish clans would turn to her to help resolve disputes with human folk. In time, many of the Dalish clans moved to the new land provided for them in the south, near Ostagar. Wary of their human neighbors, however, tensions soon rose again, and only Keeper Lanaya's leadership kept peace alive. In Orzammar, King Balin quickly proved himself a reformer. Trade with the surface lands increased and caste restrictions were loosened. The castless were permitted to take arms against the Darkspawn in exchange for new freedoms. For the first time in generations, the line in the deep roads was pushed back and a few tigs were reclaimed. Balin's reforms quickly found him enemies within the warrior and noble castes. However, and after several assassination attempts, the assembly was dissolved. The king then ruled alone, some said as a tyrant, others said as a visionary determined to drag Orzammar into the modern world. The assembly unanimously declared Niximus a living paragon. Following months of deliberation, a new statue was erected in the commons and a new house founded in the Paragon's name, quickly drawing a great number of followers from every caste. Brother Burkle's new chantry in Orzammar drew a surprising number of converts among the dwarves. They quickly attracted a great deal of anger from more conservative quarters, and before long the assembly severely restricted the Andrastians' rights. Brother Burkle resisted and was slain while being arrested during a peaceful demonstration in the commons. The assembly claimed this was an accident, but news of the resulting riots reached the Chantry on the surface, where the Divine even contemplated a new exalted march. The Dwarven Mage da Dagna ultimately completed her studies at the rebuilt Circle Tower. Eventually, she published a comprehensive theory of how lyrium vapors relate to the supply of magic. It gained a great deal of attention. Although the Anvil of the Void was destroyed, rumors about its location crept into Orzammar. Years later, thanks to the defeat of the Darkspawn on the surface, a few determined smiths managed to locate the Anvil's remains. They examined the ruins of the Anvil, and upon returning to Orzammar with their findings, convinced the Shaperit to attempt to recreate Caradan's research. A new golem was created, bound with a spirit taken from the Fade. Oh my gosh. The golem immediately went insane, killing several shapers before it was destroyed. The research was branded excessively dangerous and sealed away. Whispers of, his, of, his, bleh, of its existence circulated throughout Orzammar, however, and demand among the smith cast to reopen Keridan's research refused to abate. As good as her word, Morrigan disappeared once the archdemon was slain. Someone of Morrigan's description was seen traveling alone months later, heading west through the Frostback Mountains and she may even have been with child. There was no word of her after that. With Flemeth dead or at least gone, the chances of tracking her down were slim indeed. One cannot help but wonder, however, what became of the child? What were Morgan's plans? These questions must remain a mystery. For now. As for Neximus's companions, they went their separate ways. When Neximus finally left Denrim to continue his travels, Leliana went with them, electing to remain with the man she loved. They continued their adventures together, at least for a time. As the Blighted Lands began to heal and the Grey Wardens slowly rebuilt the Order in Amaranthine, they discovered that the fight against the Darkspawn was not yet complete. Although the Horde was routed and had dissolved upon the Archdemon's death, many of the more powerful Darkspawn survived to organize roving warbands that preyed upon both the land and upon each other. These warbands spread havoc, and some even journeyed west into Orlais, or crossed the Shining Sea by the Deep Roads. They proved incredibly difficult to wipe out. But these tales yet, but these are tales yet to be told. This tale ended when Niximus sank, sank his blade into the Archdemon's head, and destroyed it forever. It was not the last that Ferelden would hear of him, however.
And there you have it, my friends. That, my friends, was Dragon Age Origins. This was a game back in 2009 that you could say it looks a little old, and the graphics of the time were not really stand out, especially now. You know, you know, you could say that it looks kind of, you know, old compared to some of the other games. I mean, the fact that Mass Effect looked better and it came out two years earlier. But I think the point was that it was supposed to look and feel a lot like a, a, an old school RPG. And this game has received comparisons to a lot of old school RPGs like uh, Baldur's Gate is one I hear everyone compare it to. I never played Baldur's Gate so I can't really compare it to that. Um, I mean to me the comparisons I always draw when it comes to this franchise is when I see see this I see a lot of things that remind me of stuff from Lord of the Rings. And I know it's n not really a... A f you know, the comparison is not that, you know, uh, there are some things about it that are not really that similar to Lord of the Rings, but you guys can see what, what I'm saying when I see similarities between this and Lord of the Rings, where with all the different races that are also in Lord of the Rings, I mean, the storyline is uh, not, you know, not, not similar in that way, but I do like the concept of, you know, like the underground dwarven seas like Orzammar, kind of similar to those in uh, Middle Earth, like Moria, you know, you know stuff like that, and where you can compare it to Lord of the Rings. And when it comes to fantasy RPGs, uh, it's it's definitely one of my absolute all-time favorites. And the thing that, that was about the story of this game is that it made you feel like y what you were doing was extremely important, and that the quest that you had to complete was so important because. You had to form all the all these different races, all these different peoples, and try to unite them together into a great army to stop this terrible, destructive, evil force that was would have destroyed the entire all of the land and ev all the people and everything, just everything around them. And you realize that these were the consequences that you were facing. That this was what was at stake. That you had to complete your mission. To save the save this land by uniting everyone and having them stand behind you and being one of the of the few known as the Grey Wardens who could actually stop the blight, Th that uh, it was only you and your kind that could be able to defeat the Archdemon and end the blight once and for all, and it just made it amplified everything, which was not the case in the following game. But we're gonna I'll wait and discuss that when we get to it. So. Yeah, that was the main campaign, and as you can see, uh, I do love the uh, Dwarf Noble origin story. And I also love the Human Noble origin story because of the fact that whether you're a male or a female, you can actually uh, marry into becoming one of the uh, rulers of the land. You can either become a king if you're a male or a queen if you're a female, and it's, uh, it, it's really kind of a cool way to do that. Uh, and I like the fact that in the Noble one, you actually can get your rights restored in your house uh, you can rejoin your family you can become a living paragon uh one that everyone aspires to and uh you know he said he wanted to return mars and it was really because of that one little uh side quest there with uh marty uh where she had your son and you were gonna restore the rights to have him there so that maybe eventually someday he could be an heir to the throne of orzammar and the whole thing with, uh, you know, the prospect of they're constantly fighting the Darkspawn every single day because they live down there in Orzammar, very close to the Deep Roads where the Darkspawn are. It amplified that he had more of a cause to f defeat the Blight than perhaps the other origin stories. So it's it really made just made everything awesome and trying this out with the different origin stories and seeing some of the different changes the, the slight subtle changes in the dialogues and how people react to you what they say to you uh what re what results can happen from those different origin stories with different characters um like the dalish finding your buddy tamlin amongst the dark spawn uh I mentioned the human noble uh, actually finding your older brother where he's there once you defeat the archdemon and you're like oh my gosh you're my brother you're still alive you know and there are some others you know it's it's really 
just it makes your character and your your character's story it just makes it feel so important which is one of my favorite aspects of an rpg and this game does it as well as any game out there in fact you know and i would compare it to mass effect which is not surprising since the developer that made this bioware also made that and which is why bioware is is uh one of the best you know in my opinion when it comes to this aspect of storytelling and and the characters especially your own character whereas in mass effect that was focused around commander shepard for three games and you could make commander shepard yeah he was his own character but you could choose to uh, change his character and uh however you felt this it made you do the one of the traditionals of rpgs which is make your own character from scratch and get the multiple choice of the origin stories, which is so unique. The fact that you can experience all these different origin stories and each has a different effect on the main story. And there are different ramifications and consequences uh, from your choices and uh, from the characters that you encounter, you know, like Gorham uh, with his story. Yeah, you do run into him in the main story with the other ones, but you don't know his story until you play this one. And then you find out that he was your second and he and you know everything that happened there and that he gets to be raised back up with you. So let's take a look at the cast here for the credits. Steve Valentine, an amazing job. Peter Renaday, of course. Uh, Tim Curry, of course, as Arl Howe. Simon Templeman as Loghain, fantastic job. As well as Claudia Bl uh, Black. Steve Bloom as great job as always. John Curry with Zevran. And some, some of the other additional voice actors here. Steve Barr. Um, all did just absolutely. Kimberly Brooks. Yep, I know. I know. Did know her name there. Uh, I recognized her voice at some point. And uh, Jim Cummings. You'll you'll notice there's some very recognizable names here. Uh, some of which I I definitely know from uh, were other characters in other games, especially Bioware games. And they do love to use the same voice actors. You know, which is great because they're all just fantastic, phenomenal voice actors. Mark Mir, there you go, the voice of male Commander Shepard, right there, Mark Mir. As well as Nolan North, he was in this game. Wow, I forgot, I didn't even realize that that Nolan North was actually in this game. So, yeah, they got so many. Look at this, so many voice actors, and all of them did an absolutely amazing job. I really don't can't think of any characters that I think did a poor job when it came to the voice acting. Uh, just so many aspects of this was just absolutely top triple A uh, production value, which makes which is why this game is just so highly um, so highly acclaimed and very well loved amongst the fan base. Uh, just the the way they really went to the detail and taking care of every little aspect of this game was just absolutely phenomenal, well done. And how they did it for the later in, late, the next installment, uh, I'll get into that when we do a playthrough of Dragon Age 2. Um, and I've yet to, but more importantly, we've also have yet to see some of the other ramifications of these choices, which I hope will will uh, be made clear in inquisition which is coming out later this month and uh i have no uh i you know status for you guys on when or how i will do that um i will try and figure that out at some point but so you're probably but you're probably wondering what are my plan for the rest of this franchise pretty much the next thing you can expect will be the expansion that that was part that they released for this game later on which was called Awakening, where you can actually import your character from this main campaign into that one and be able to kind of continue uh, a different aspect of the story that happened after this. This You remember that Alistair referred to the Arling of Amaranthine. Well, that's where you're going to go. You're going to go to a place uh, ne that's near the city of Amaranthine. And I'm going to save for what happens when we actually do that. But uh, so then after that, there were a couple of other DLCs they released. Uh, one called The Golems of Amgarak, which is not really my favorite part of this of this game. It's uh, pretty difficult and uh, it's kind of unnecessary for the story. But it's got a couple of interesting things. And then the last piece was Witch Hunt, where you try and find Morrigan. And you get somewhat of an extra bit of information regarding what her plans were. But that will have to wait until later on. And then once those are done, then we will see what happened, what 
Bioware decided to do regarding Dragon Age 2, which I hear is actually more prominent and more uh, of a central focus in the, in the upcoming game Inquisition than this was, which is disappointing because, since this game I consider to be much better than Dragon Age 2, especially in the department of the story and characters. Um, not so much in the combat. I will say this. The combat in 2 was is definitely better than the combat in this one because this one was kind of slow and sluggish. Uh, there were times where I would try and tell my character, hey, go do, to go do this attack, and he would just kind of stand there and not really respond. Or sometimes he would be right in front of the guy and he would start doing these sidestep things like he had to be at a perfect angle to attack him rather than just do the attack. And it was... It, it became a little frustrating in, in the, the aspect of the combat of this where it was just so slow. But then again, keep in mind that this is the console version of the game and not the PC version. And the many who know about this game know the story that this game was originally intended to be a PC exclusive game because it's got a different format for the combat utilizing uh, this overhead shot. But regardless, I think the console version is still a very good version of the game. Uh, not as good as the PC version, I will I will admit that. But it's still if you if you only have a console, uh, 360 or PS3, it's definitely worth worth a try. It's definitely worth a playthrough, uh, worth grabbing a copy and playing it yourself. So, and uh, so you just saw the uh, Dwarf Noble Origin Story playthrough. Um, if you want an idea of what the other Origin Stories are, uh, I made a playlist of those uh, stories. Y you can check those out. So. That's it for Dragon Age Origins, the main campaign. Now, when uh, I will see you guys next time when we import this character into the Awakening expansion, and we will see how Neximus's story continues. Until then, I'm DJ Neeks, and I'll see you guys next time.